wait is finally over. The Chromax U12A and the Chromax NFA 12x25 are finally here. Today, that's what we'll be checking out. Welcome to Machines More. I'm excited to show you these. These are the much anticipated new Chromax Black Swap NFA 12x25s. Now it may not make sense, but uh, Chromax, presumably derived from the Greek word for color, chroma, actually has become synonymous with the black fan in Noctua speak. Yeah, it also refers to those little color bits. But let's face it, so many of us are giddy because of the fact that this fan is black. And if you know how great these fans are, you know why this is a special day, right? These were originally anticipated last year, then amidst all the manufacturing and logistical challenges, they got pushed out to earlier this year, got pushed out again. And then for some of us, it almost looked like they were never going to come, but then boom, here they are, right? Now, personally, I like tan and brown. I like chocolate, I love my espresso. And these, they give me all sorts of warm coffee and cocoa vibes. And Noctua being an Austrian company based in Vienna where chocolate making and coffee is so much a part of the culture, I love it. But suffice to say, some of you like these fans, but you find it hard to work the scheme into the look you want. But be honest with yourself, what you really wanted was just tan and brown RGB to make it all come together, right? But hey, moot point now, if you want black, you can get black now. So of course the change wasn't as simple as just painting the fan, you know, give me a can of spray paint, I'll go out back and I'll be done in five minutes type of thing, right? But Noctua did have to retool their process and that meant changing the injection molding process and while changing the color, they did have to carefully test and fine tune each and every iteration to ensure that the performance characteristics that you've come to love on the A12 by 25 remain unchanged. And while Noctua has plenty of Chromax heat sinks in their portfolio at this point, since the U12A package includes those NFA 12 by 25s in Chromax black, well, that heat sink was just pending the fans. So today we're gonna to take a look at the new U12A in conjunction with the new fans, and then we're going to test and make sure that the performance characteristics are indeed unchanged. Noctua did provide the cooler, the heat sink covers that you'll see, and the fan samples for the purpose of making this video review today, but this video is not sponsored. They aren't privy to the independent testing and they haven't seen this video before its release, but a big thanks to them for helping make this review possible. So first off, let's take a look at the fans. They're a little different. Other than the color, this hub, it does look a little different with the Chromax version compared to the tannin browns, you see that? And the cable actually on the standalone version of the fan terminates close to the frame for use with a provided extension cable. And this is very similar to other Chromax fans like the Chromax NFA 12x15. Now if we take a look at the blades, it's a similar liquid crystal polymer Sterox material comparable to the original brown blades. They're not jet black, it's more of a mottled dark gray color and they still have that same luxurious thick substantial feel. Very solid axle, no wobble, bearing still feels buttery smooth. The serial number is stamped on the same side that the cable exits so if you're trying to hide the cable you can also hide the serial number stamp. Now it may seem like a small detail but that was a bit of a cosmetic issue with the fans on the Chromax D15 cooler. Now these fans are definitely darker than the Fantex T30s and the standalone version of the fan does come with these really nice kind of medium gray vibration dampeners that I think that matches the overall look of the fan really well in addition to the other colored vibration dampeners that you can put on the fan. Now there's only four of each color though so you have to mix and match but I think you can come up with a combo that uh, you'll enjoy. Other than those you get a gasket for use with the radiator and the extension cable, the fan screws, but unlike the originals you don't get the splitter cable or the low noise adapter cables which I think is totally fine because most of you are using PWM to control the fan anyway so that LNA cable usually goes unused. Just like the originals, these are also made in Taiwan. All right, moving on to the cooler. The U12A is the best single tower heat sink out there. It's got seven heat pipes and the Chromax version essentially adds a luxurious satin black finish to it. 
The base plate is pretty big already, so it is ready to accommodate the recently announced Alder Lake CPUs on LGA 1700. But one notable change is that the Intel backplate has been tweaked. It used to be one piece with the standoffs fused in place, but now because you need flexibility between LGA 1200 and 1700, you get these pivotal standoffs. That's really neat. So you put each one in the one or the two position, depending on if you're mounting for LGA 115X or 1200 or for Alder Lake, and then you clip the standoff in place with the plastic clip. New blue spacers too for Team Blue's comeback, I assume. So other than the color, the heatsink mass is about the same at 740 grams, but knowing that on occasion, We've seen some differences between coated aluminum heat sinks and non-coated ones. I didn't want to take it for given that these would just perform the same. And I also wanted to validate their hard efforts in ensuring that the performance characteristics of the Chromax uh, fans were unchanged. So let's take a look at some performance data. All right, but first let's take a listen to the fans and do some acoustic comparisons. I set two of each A12 by 25 version on the Chromax U12A at 10% PWM increments over 60%. There is a small difference, but I won't tell you what it is yet. So see how good your ears are and see if you can tell which one sounds louder or different to you. All right, so if you could somehow tell that the tan and browns were a tiny bit quieter, you're absolutely right. And consider your ears golden. This isn't a performance issue. But they're not quieter per se. It's just because at the same PWM levels, the OG's response was approximately 40 RPM to 50 RPM lower. And this was consistent across each of the fans I tested and I metered each one separately. And for two fans, uh, this amounted to approximately a 0.2 decibel delta. Now, normally there is gonna be some variance or a fudge factor built into the RPM. So rest assured at equivalent RPMs that noise is identical and there were no odd noises either as you might expect from these fans. So this is more of a just set your curves accordingly type of difference. So with that in mind, let's first compare the performance of the two heat sinks. Uh, here I am testing with the Mighty Mighty 5800X locked at 4.6 gigahertz on 1.25 volts on the ASUS X570 ITX board in the NR200, and I've got four NFA 12 by 25s as case fans. I know I don't have enough of these Chromax ones to get a full NR200 Chromax yet, and uh, but I targeted approximately 1500 RPM on the Chromax fans, and the only difference here is the choice of heatsink. So if you take a look at the final temps in the last minute for the blender render, normalized to 25 degrees C ambient, we're looking at a 0.1 degree delta between the two heat sinks with Chromax fans and a 0.4 degree delta between the two with the tan and browns, this being well within run to run variance. And in general, that slightly faster RPM response from the Chromaxes to that same uh, PWM signal does result in about a 0.3 degree benefit at this level. So functionally, Noctua did a great job here. If there is a consistent penalty from the coating, you're not really gonna notice it. What about the fans? Well, to test that, we do have to normalize the actual RPM. So what I did was bumped up the tandem browns and at 69% PWM, we get to roughly the same speeds as the uh, Chromax is at 67%. And yeah, these are performing exactly the same. So all that is to say, pick the color you want. Uh, typically though, Chromax coolers are gonna run you about $10 more. And from what I've seen that is holding true, the Chromax U12A is going to come in at about $120 US. And if you are interested in Alder Lake, this is going to be the more straightforward route to getting the LGA 1700 hardware from Noctua. Although Noctua has announced that they will be providing free of charge kits if you have a compatible cooler. Now, interestingly, even though the Chromax fans typically run a few bucks more like uh, around $5 sometimes, these ones, however, are priced exactly the same at 33 US each. And I'm guessing that the emission of the extra cables and the inclusions uh, somewhat makes up for that gap. I mean, $33 is already 
getting up there. So I think 38 bucks or 40 bucks would have been a really tough sell. So hey, kudos to them for finding a way to keep the same price. Noctua also sent by these new heat sink covers for the U12A. These will work equally well on the bare aluminum original version or the Chromax version of the U12A. There's a straight black or straight white version. And there's also a black one with swappable color inserts. So on these, you just clip on the mounting plate to the top of the heatsink, and the magnetic cover just clicks into place. Unfortunately, if you're an NR200 fan or you have limited clearance in another case, this makes the cooler taller. And in the case of the NR200, it's too tall for the panel to close, which totally sucks because my goodness, that white cover looks so, so good in the black NR200. But uh, overall, well done by Noctua. I love the look of the new goodies, the new fans, the U12A, the heatsink, all work as expected, continuing their legacy of top-notch build quality and performance. And having built out the NR200 this way for this review and mixing and matching the fans, I do feel a little guilty saying, my favorite look at the end of the day is the new Chromax heatsink with the OG fans. Or how about industrial? Well. My son loves the color bits and I asked him to create his favorite look and of course he went with this one. Uh, so I guess there's something there for everyone. <laughs> Anyhow, I hope that gives you a good overview of the new Chromax goodies. I will be checking out the U12A with the 12600K and I'm also curious if you'll be going for the black fans or if you're sticking like a loyalist with tan and brown. So let me know in the comments down below, give a like, subscribe, Product links down below. Thanks for watching today.